this opportunity for us to have a St. John enshrinement. Uh, we are uh, particularly <coughs> blessed today to have our shepherd of the Austin Diocese, Bishop Joe Vasquez, with us, uh, along with uh, many individuals who have made the work of the John Paul II Life Center possible. Uh, particularly, I want to recognize uh, Dr. Calvarides, uh, who everyone knows, and Heather, his wife, who are members of our board, uh, Nancy Carano, and her husband, John. John's not here this morning, but Nancy and John are members of our board. Sherry Danzy and her husband, Chris, members of our board, and my wife, Pat, and myself, Tim Bondola. And, and we're so thankful for uh, all the assistance that uh, each of you has given to us in this journey. And it truly is a journey every day. We're honored to be uh, led every day in the work of the John Paul II Life Center by Kim Spear, who is our executive director. And uh, you'll uh, get to meet uh, others of our staff here at the John Paul II Life Center and Vitae Clinic as the course of the day goes on. So welcome for being here. Our, our first thing to do this morning is to ask our chaplain, uh, Father Jim Evans, to give us a short uh, invocation to bless our food and to bless our gathering this morning. Father Jim. Tim knows me, he added the word short. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. Dear Heavenly Father, out of your gracious love, out of your divine mercy, comes all of the love that you have poured into the creation of this world in which we have the opportunities to follow you. Now, by the gift of St. Gianna to the world, you have given us another example of that shining light that we should always follow in order to truly, truly lead our lives according to the dictates that you have put forth in the loving manner through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And now, as we gather to honor this woman and to bless this work which continues upon this earth, we ask her always to bless this John Paul II Life Center. All of those who have made it what it is, may it continue and may it bask in eternity in your love through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father Jim, that must have been a fraudy slip on my part. Sometimes <laughs> <laughs> come out when you don't intend them. <laughs> but we, we are so honored to have everyone here this morning, and uh, we do have a breakfast for you to enjoy. Uh, we're going to be pretty informal, but uh, after, after we get our uh, event started. Uh, th this has really been a, an event in planning for several years, and it's finally coming to fruition. Uh, it's a great opportunity for uh, us to be able to create a demonstration of what Jeremy actually lives out every day in his practice, and that is truly living his faith every day in his practice, and that's uh, demonstrated through the life of St. Gianna, uh, who was a physician herself, of course. You'll know what, learn more about her from someone who uh, knows her family and knows all about her much, much more than I. But at this point, we're going to ask uh, for a, a small procession to come forward and, and it, uh, bringing in uh, certain relics uh, of St. Gianna uh, and part of what we will uh, have both blessed and demonstrated this morning. So at this time, we'll ask our procession to, to come forward. Extremely uh, blessed this morning, as I say, to uh, be in the presence of uh, Bishop Vasquez and to uh, learn some first about uh, St. John. So, Bishop, we're, we're going to uh, introduce Thomas McKenna, who's going to 
tell us a little bit about St. Gianna first, and then we'll proceed with the sermon. So, <coughs> so it's, it's my pleasure to present to everyone at this time Thomas McKenna. And, and Thomas uh, is an individual that Pat and I had the opportunity to meet about three years ago and, and sit around a table and talk about uh, what he was doing to uh, help people learn about the life of St. Gianna. And, and he has done this around not just uh, California, his home, uh, or around Texas, but around the United States and really over many parts of the world. And so we're deeply honored to have Thomas McKenna with us this morning. Thomas, if you would, take over and tell us about St. Gianna. Thank you, Tim. Well, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be with here with you, Your Excellency, sisters, fathers. And um, like Tim said, I met him three years ago, right when we had, we had formed this apostolate about six years ago um, in California. And I'm going to give you just a brief explanation about what our apostolate now reaches and why the person of St. Gianna in the connection there. Uh, there's a lot more we can say about it, but I'm going to be very kind of focused to the point here. If others, if you have questions after, I'll be happy to explain. Um, the reason I conceived the idea of founding this organization was because, as, as many of you, myself, I've been involved um, most of my life in lay apostolates, defending the church, promoting church values, um, clarifying things for the faithful. And many times we know we have the truth. My involvement, my whole life I've given this is to help the church. I'm doing this because I believe in my faith. But when you're out there on television or on a university campus or in a debate, many times in this secular world we live in, we have to use the elements that we have. For example, today, we're gaining um, on the, the anti-abortion movement because of the advancement of science. Medicine is on our side. So now because of fetal pain, we're getting laws passed. Now, we don't want to stop abortion just because of fetal pain, but we have to fight it. And I saw that the one of the, um, the experts in our world today to help us are physicians. Physicians who have the science and who are recognized by the secular world as being experts they can help us, they're, they're authorities on it. So a physician saying this is wrong, this is not good medicine, this is a life, carries a weight in many circumstances that clergy doesn't even have. So the challenge is how to get physicians that are not already involved in an apostle like this, or that are not already proactive as a Catholic in their practice of medicine defending it, and that's what this is about. So I thought, there's a, a book, a great uh, part of my spiritual life and my life called The Soul of the Apostolate by Don Chotard. The theory of the book is, for, was written for priests, but it applies for us laity, is you can't give what you don't have. The extent of your external life is going to depend on the spiritual life. So talking with Archbishop Corleone now and Cardinal Burke, who are my Episcopal advisors and very close friends of mine, I said, we need to reach out and get the spirit of physicians. How are we going to get physicians more interested or more involved in being uh, Catholic and practicing medicine if we don't change it? If we can get them to be a little bit more Catholic somehow, then they will see the light, hopefully, and step out. So that's what this is about. So when we did that, I said, you know what? We have the catechism. We have so much. I don't want to just have one more organization with information. We have that. We have the Catholic Medical Association. You have a local guild here, which is phenomenal, um, that works here with Catholic physicians in your diocese. So what we said is we want to make something that complements it. How does a local guild, or like this, the Catholic Medical Association are very interested, how do we reach out to find doctors that aren't in our camp? That's where St. Gianna comes in. We promote St. Gianna, who was a devoted wife, a mother, and a physician. We should promote her life. St. Gianna is the last saint canonized by Pope John Paul II. She was a woman who many people know her because she risked her life to give birth to a child when she was diagnosed with a tumor in two months pregnancy. But that wasn't why she was canonized. She was canonized because the way she lived out her life. And a very important point for all of us is that the church says, what is a saint? A saint is a person who practiced virtue to a heroic degree. A saint is a hero. 
Saint's not a person who prays, that's what they do, or stayed in the monastery, that's what they do. But a saint, which we're all called to, is we practice virtue to a hero, if you're a hero. That's why we put them on the wall, why we have statues. In football, you got a football hero, and that's what you're aspiring to, you have a, you have a hero. You want to learn about them, you read about their life, because you want to imitate them, right? Because you want to be a good football player. The Catholic Church says that's what we want from saints why we should read about their life, learn about their, their life, and learn about their virtues. So St. John of Retamola was an example for us. She, was, she did all this. She lived a life, she was a practicing physician, but she also was a dedicated Catholic, a movement called Catholic Action she was involved with, and there's so much in her life that inspired us. So that's what St. Gianna, a physician's guild, was about, is teaching about her life and reaching out to show physicians why they should follow her. We also take public positions and we want to bring together a movement of physicians to speak out in defense of the church in support of our pastors as physicians. But to get them there, the spiritual side is the enshrinement. So here we have, a, this will be left here, is a picture with a second class relic of St. John. This is a piece of her clothing. This here is a relic that I brought. It's one of the most impressive relics. That it's the only one that exists in the world. It's the fetoscope. This is a fetoscope that was used by St. Gianna to listen to the heartbeat of the babies in the mother's womb. And here I'm very, very blessed to have. This is a first class relic. It is a, lock, a little bit of hair from a lock of hair that was taken from St. Gianna when she was buried. Now it's interesting, St. Gianna, I, I mentioned this last night, is unique in that it's the first time in the history of our church, history of the world, that a saint was canonized and the spouse attended the canonization. St. Gianna's husband Pietro, as I mentioned, was the first man ever in the history of the world that could legitimately say, my wife is a saint. <laughs> It was the first time in history that someone was canonized and the children, St. John's three living children, attended the canonization of their mother. When people call me sometimes for special prayers or friends, I call, Jana and I are very close friends, we're the same age, and the youngest daughter who St. John gave her life, and I call her and I say, Jana, when you go to the cemetery today, can you pray to your mother for this intention? It's, it's a very awesome. So that's something we have in our life. There's a lot, there's a little booklet that some of you have here that I, I wrote. It's a short booklet made for doctors, although many others read it, um, highlighting her, um, her, her mission. And I'll just close with one little phrase that I think sums up. It's from the words of St. John, but it basically sums up what the mission of our, our work is. We're, is challenging a world where we see that everyone says medicine is secular. And we say the Catholic Church inspired healthcare, inspired hospitals. So this is what St. Gianna said about a doctor's mission, and that's what I'll leave you with, because that's what we are really trying to establish and, and to work with your local guild here and uh, the center here and your, your bishop here is to establish in Austin. So this is what St. Gianna said. We physicians have opportunities that a priest does not have. For our mission does not end when medicine is no longer of help. There still remains the soul that must be brought to God. Jesus says, whoever visits the sick is helping me. This is a priestly mission. So she calls the vocation of the practice of medicine a priestly mission. So with that, I'd like to invite Your Excellency to come forth and uh, conduct the ceremony. <laughs> we, have, we have presented uh, Bishop Vasquez, but we'll ask Bishop Vasquez to come forward. And he is joined today by Father Frank Dukowski, the receiving chaplain. And we're honored to, to have you here with us. Thank you, Bishop Vasquez. And to, if you would, everybody look at your booklet and follow along. This <laughs> one may fight us all this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May God, the source of all holiness, who never ceases to call us to follow Christ, be with you all. And with your spirit. The Lord forgives our sins and heals our infirmities. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Gospel tells us that our Lord Jesus Christ, God, the Son incarnate, 
during his public ministry, went about forgiving sins and healing the sick. By his teachings, he revealed to us that he has taken upon himself, especially through his passion and death, all of our sin and suffering. He taught us that when we visit the sick and care for them, we visit him and show to him our love. The visit and care of the sick is therefore a priestly ministration for a unity with Christ. In his care for the sick and indeed care for Christ himself, he comes to us in those who are suffering. In visiting and caring for the sick, we take care not only of their physical needs, but we lead them to Christ for the healing of their sins and their infirmities. Those who devote themselves to the care of the sick and dying, especially physicians, participate in Christ's ministry of healing in a direct way, helping their patients to regain health as much as possible, but more importantly, assisting their patients to embrace their sufferings as a share in the suffering of Christ, and therefore a powerful way of loving God and neighbor. The heroic example of St. Gianna Beretta Mola, wife, mother, and physician, teaches us the profoundly spiritual dimension of the medical art and inspires in physicians and all healthcare workers the compassion of Christ, who healed the sick and forgave their sins. The establishment of a shrine with the image of St. Gianna Beretta Mola recognizes the God-given mission of physicians and healthcare workers. It is not a single action, but expresses the commitment to carry out the ministry of healthcare with Christ-like faith, hope, and love, as it is heroically manifested in the life and death of St. Gianna. The relic of St. Gianna is a source of particular blessing to the faithful who reverence it and a strong reminder that the grace of Christ's healing is to permeate every aspect of our lives as we care for the sick and the suffering. May the establishment of a shrine with the image of St. Gianna Beretta Mola in this place of health care and healing inspire all who enter here, both those who are sick and suffering and those who care for them in the name of Christ, who alone forgives our sins and binds up our every wound. Let us all say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The Lord Jesus appointed 72 disciples whom he sent ahead of him in pairs to every town and place he intended to visit. He said to them, the harvest is abundant, but the laborers are few. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. Go on your way. Behold, I am sending you like lambs among wolves. Carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. And to whatever house you enter, first say, Peace to this household. If a peaceable person lives there, your peace will rest on them. And if not, it will return to you. Stay in the same house and eat and drink what is offered to you, for the laborer deserves his payment. Do not move from one house to another. Whatever town you enter, and they welcome you, Eat what is set before you, cure the sick in it, and say to them, The kingdom of God is at hand for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, it's a great honor for me as the bishop of the diocese to be here this morning at this wonderful event as we have this enshrinement of St. Gianna. 
that Esta Mola here and the John Paul the Life, John Paul II Life Center, and also Pinte Clinic. I want to say thank you to all of those who made this possible. Thank you, Kim, Pat, and others who participated in this event and making it possible today. I also want to thank uh, Dr. Calamarides for the wonderful work that he has done here for your staff and helpers, your wife, family, everyone else who's uh, participated in this wonderful place, which has become, I think, a great uh, sign of hope for so many people. It's a great sign of hope. Uh, they can receive good health care. Women can come here and receive that. At the same time, it promotes our wonderful values of life and the dignity of the human person. That, to me, is essential and most important. I want to thank also Seton for the wonderful help and cooperation that you have given uh, to cooperate and collaborate here with the Life Center and continuing this wonderful work that we have here. <laughs> Since I've come here as a bishop, I've only been here now three years in the diocese, I've been very much impressed with the wonderful uh, example of so many people here who cherish this wonderful gift of life that we have as Catholics. And it's not just a Catholic value, but it's a human value. It's the value of uplifting, wonderful gift of life. It's a blessing. And so when I see uh, little children, little babies, it gives me great hope. When I see pregnant mothers, it gives me great hope. Those are great signs to us of uh, life. Life is taking place right here. Um, and people warned me when I came to Boston. They warned me, you're going to a place that's going to be very much uh, maybe antagonistic to our Catholic values, to Christian values. And though that has been found here, I have to say uh, I have found wonderful persons, laity, religious, priests, deacons, uh, who really value life and who cherish it and protect it. And that, to me, gives me great hope and inspiration. Um, this last week, we were before the uh, legislators, because, of course, our session is in place right now, uh, to speak about those life issues again. And uh, it's wonderful that we were well received. Uh, people came up to us and appreciated everything that we've done and said. Uh, but we're doing it not simply to gain any fame or attention, but because of our fidelity to Christ and his gospel. Today, as we hear the wonderful uh, good news of Christ appointing the disciples, he sends them out, and he almost sends them out without anything. And he says, you have to depend on whatever generosity is given to you. Whatever charity is given out to you, that's what you have to depend on. And sometimes that's the way we have to go into the world. I think a lot of times we try to arm ourselves with too much, and that kind of obscures our message. Uh, but I think it's when we are totally dependent upon Christ and upon him for everything. So he says, carry no money bag, no sack, no sandals, and greet no one along the way. That should not mean that we are going to be... Uh, less hospitable and greet no one along the way. It simply means there's an urgency to what you're about. There's a need to get to work. And that's really what's important here. And about blessing uh, households and about then uh, staying in a house, eating what's put before you. Uh, and whatever town you enter and welcomes you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick and say to them, the kingdom of God is at hand. St. Gianna, was a great example of the kingdom of God being at hand. She believed it, she lived it, and uh, that was part of her whole life. Uh, and so the way she lived her life, conducted herself, has given us a great example for us. Uh, I want us to continue to spread this wonderful news, especially to our physicians and healthcare workers, about the wonderful example she is to us today. A modern woman, a physician, a professional, a wife, mother, there she is, you know, doing all these wonderful things, just living out her life, exemplary. Uh, so I think that that's a great encouragement for us all to live out our lives in the way that God has called us to live. Let us now ask God to uh, help us as we prepare to do the enshrinement and to bless us in our mission today. <clears throat> <coughs> This time we will have the oath taken by uh, Dr. Calamaridis, who will recite the St. Gianna Physicians Guild Catholic Hippocratic Oath, and then together we will sign this commitment and oath. This is the St. Gianna Physicians Guild Catholic Hippocratic Oath. I swear by our Heavenly Father, St. Luke the Physician, and my patron saints, 
all the holy people of the, of the church, making them my witness that I will fulfill according to my ability and judgment this oath and this covenant. To hold him who has brought me this art as my constant model and to live my life in partnership with him, to give through him a share of my time and money, and to regard all my patience as my brothers in Christ, and in such manner apply this art. And to whomever desires to learn this, I will share the precepts and give oral instruction and all other learning appropriate to the art according to my station in life, provided, provided that these pupils have signed the covenant and have taken an oath according to the medical law and the laws of the Holy Catholic Church. I will apply all medical measures for the benefit of the sick according to my ability and judgment. I will keep them from harm and injustice. I will neither give deadly drug to anybody who asks for it, nor will I make suggestions to this effect. Similarly, similarly, I will not give to a woman an abortive remedy, nor advise any agent to prevent pregnancy. I will not refer to any practitioner for the purpose of procuring such services. In purity and holiness, I will guard my life and my heart. I will not use the knife nor any remedy at which I am not skilled, but will withdraw in favor of such practitioners who are as engaged in this work. Whatever rooms or hospitals or houses I may visit, I will come for the benefit of the sick, remaining free of all intentional injustice, of all mischief, and in particular, sexual relations with both female and male persons, be they rich or poor, strong or weak. What I may see or hear in the course of treatment, or even outside of treatment in regard to the life of my patients, which on no account one must spread abroad, I will keep to myself, holding such things shameful to be spoken about. If I fulfill this oath and do not violate it, may it be granted to me to enjoy life and art, being honored among all men for all time to come, and in the blessed and in the end, blessed with eternal salvation by our benevolent and loving Almighty Father. If I transgress it and swear falsely, may the opposite of all this be my lot. who have erected this image of St. Gianna, the friend and co-heir of Christ. She is for us thy witness to the life of the gospel, stands in thy presence to plead for us. Grant that we may benefit from her intercession. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
personal consecration. O Mary, into thy eternal hands I place, commend, and abandon myself entirely, sure of obtaining what I request. I rely upon thee, because thou art my sweet mother. I confide in thee, because thou art mother of Jesus. I entrust myself to thee. In this trust I rest sure of meeting her in everything. With this trust in my heart, I greet thee, my mother, my confidence. I consecrate myself entirely to thee, begging thee to remember that I am thine own. Guard me and defend me, sweet Mary, and in every instant of my life, present me thyself to thy Son, Jesus. Christ the Lord came into the world to heal the sick and comfort the afflicted. Let us pray to him in humility. O Lord, Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for the Church, especially the Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop, Bishop Joe, along with all the bishops. May they continue to proclaim Christ daily through their work as shepherds of the Church. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for all parents. May they selflessly give of themselves for their children and pass on the faith they have received. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all doctors as instruments of the healing love of Christ. May they always preserve human life and whenever confronted with dilemma, turn to the gospel for guidance. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all married couples who desire the gift of children. May they be blessed with the abundance of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. With the Savior's command informed by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. O God, who said that there is no greater love than laying down one's life for the sake of the beloved, we thank you for giving us your servant, Gianna, as a shining example of true love and respect for human life. Help us to understand, live, and spread her message. Revive in all young women of the world a profound sense of their mission and a deep respect for life, which, which is God's gift, even though this may cause them self-immolation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to take the first class relic of St. Jana and invoke God's blessings upon us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Remain in peace. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you for coming. Thank you, Dr. Calvarez, for what you do every day. And we want to again thank Seaton. Uh, as Bishop mentioned, our collaboration with Seaton and, and James Davis is here representing Seaton this morning. Uh, we have some other Seaton healthcare workers as well. But we thank them for their collaborative effort with us as we work here and we work to create clinics like this all across the United States together. Uh, and Dr. Calabrese, if you would be so kind at this point in time to introduce your staff. Oh, yes. Andrea Grobel in the back here, and then the assistants, and also Christine Messick, who's been taking photographs. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Also Joyce Sturkle, uh, so uh, Diana Arteaga, who is one of my nurse practitioners, and she's also a creating model fertility care practitioner too. So, small staff, but we work all very hard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
going to be giving tours of the center. Uh, please, if you haven't done that, please enjoy the tour. Enjoy some breakfast. Uh, pick up a goodie bag as you uh, depart, and, and be sure that you have registered and given us uh, all your information that's up here. Uh, again, we want to thank you so much for being here, uh, particularly Bishop Vasquez. Father, we thank you, and Father Jim. Uh, each of you, thank you so much for all you do, and uh, may God continue to bless the VTA Clinic and John Paul Two Life Center. Thank you. Thank you.